Hi, everybody, and welcome to TNN Coaching Unplugged, the Zorin Todorovic Interconnected, the space where you elevate your heart, your soul, your mind to the next level and beyond. We're so grateful and happy to have you back on our channel, listening week by week. We're also super grateful for your comments and the feedback that you consistently receive after each and every podcast. So thank you so much for being such a proactive audience and for engaging with us as well. And today, we're going to go into the business landscape. We're going to talk about high-impact teams. Recently, I've been witnessing a lot of conversations with some of TNM coaching clients when it comes to the team performance, team creating the high-impact teams, the challenges the teams are facing. And we're realizing more and more that due to the crisis we have in the world right now, the impact of pandemic, the impact of hybrid working, decentralized teams, virtual teams, teams not being able to meet that often physically, there's a high demand for people to create a communication that is necessary for teams to really work well. And people are struggling. I can see that there's a big pain point. You know, when I talk to clients, they always say the team can perform better. The individuals within the team can perform better. Our team is not coherent enough. There's a lot of conversation on how do we improve this team performance. And we know that from our experiences, when team performs, everything goes well, the organization excels, we create and produce results. And it's really important that we find these new modalities of how to empower teams nowadays. And today I have a very new friend, a good friend, new friend, uh, Nadeem Wilf, who is a CEO. He's also a coach. He's an emotional intelligence expert. He is an impact investor. He's philanthropist is one of these people that I always invite to the podcast of many, 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 many facets, but he loves teams and he loves coaching. He has dedicated part of his life and his work to create a, a wonderful platform that we're going to be talking about. It will empower your team to come to this high impact, optimum performance through communication, collaboration, and mostly through understanding the, and aligning individual and team emotional intelligence. And I also want to bookmark this for the people who are listening that I think this is an original and beautiful idea when we look into the team performance from the lens of emotional intelligence. So it's going to be a fun conversation. Once again, welcome. And Nadab, welcome. How are you today? I am uh, I'm doing great overall. You know, I, I think I'd, for people listening, we're, we're, we're at a bit of a challenging time with the events that have happened um, in in Israel and Palestine, and and I was there, um, so yeah, just want to be authentic and, and open and vulnerable about it. Um, so I'm, I'm grateful, I'm I'm safe, and and uh, focused on on being okay. But very happy to be here, and uh, yeah, just a lot of admiration for you, Zoran. So I'm happy to be here. Oh well, so welcome, and thank you so much for being so open and vulnerable. And this is again the segue into us talking about emotional intelligence. So when you begin exploring the team performance, what is necessary for team to achieve that high level of performance, and, and you were beginning to look into this from the lens of emotional intelligence, how did it happen in your life? What inspired you to give the emphasis on how do we feel impacts our performance? What do we believe impacts our performance? And then how do we act in life impacts our individual and team performance? What was your life journey into that? Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm 41, so it's, it, there's, there's a lot that's happened. I'll, I'll synthesize it in regards to that. I think, uh, you know, as a child, I was very connected to my emotions and, and really had this intuitive feeling of being able to read people's thoughts. I mean, that's, you know, children are so connected to, to themselves, to source, you know, to their emotions. There's really no filter. And so I had that experience and I, I used it, uh, I, I tested using it for good and I tested using it to manipulate. Um, as a, a child, you know, does that's exploring. Um, looking back later, you know, I realized that at around 12 years old, I started to lose it. And that was this point where I started having more and more consciousness of undesired uh, feelings and thoughts of being unworthy, you know, being uncertain about myself, you know, uh, judging myself, comparing myself to others. And, uh, you know, a lot coming from, from parent relationships. My, my parents are, are incredible. So grateful for them, but you know, there's, there's nuances to, to those relationships. 
And, um, you know, in my 16, 17, I went through some, some depression dealing with, with certain, uh, situations that I, you know, wasn't, hadn't dealt with before and, uh, came out of that and basically said, Hey, I'm going to just do what I want in life. You know, I'm going to not to let myself get hurt in a romantic relationship. I'm going to prove myself to my parents and I'm going to start a business and I'm going to, you know, prove myself to everyone. And during my twenties, uh, it was about seven, eight years of, of building and, and selling multiple companies. And at the end of it, what I realized was that I had built and sold them from a place of unworthiness, from a place of wanting to prove myself, from a place of stress and fear of failure. And so the year after I sold the companies, I was 29. And so I went from not having money uh, to having money and traveling the world, so w- waking up and going, I'm in California. I'm going to go ski in Italy today. Right. And, and just doing stuff like that, like, a, you know, a 29 year old would that, that, you know, ha- had this transformation in life. And at the end of that year, what I realized was that, uh, I went out on my, my balcony. I was living on the 28th floor in a high rise in San Diego, beautiful apartment overlooking the ocean. And I realized that I was, I was happy overall. Like I wasn't going to be a jerk about, you know, my situation, but I wasn't fulfilled. And that feeling on fulfillment was missing. And, and, and by, by acknowledging that, by being vulnerable about it, you know, I immediately started sharing that with people close to me, that experience. And right away, they say, when the student's ready, the master appears, I started learning about personal development. I have a degree in psychology from UCLA. Uh, but I, but I really wasn't aware of these programs that are available group programs, you know, where you go in three days, five days retreats back in the day, you know, we didn't have Facebook, Instagram, and, and all these, you know, all these things that now you can, you know, they're readily available. And, you know, right away, the city, a city attorney had, had asked me for lunch actually, um, that, that same week before this happened and told me about a program called a landmark and, uh, you go in there, a great program recommended for everyone. It's landmark worldwide. I've, I've registered like 300 people into the program. Not, not, you know, I'm not a, not like a multi-level marketing thing. Um, yeah. If you like cults, it's great. But um, yeah, I went in there and just things just started shifting, falling away. You know, I finally was able to understand my parents and my dynamic with them. And, you know, within a day, we'd been to therapy and things like that together. And so my life just transformed. And within two years, um, I finally loved myself fully. You know, I would, I, I, you're going to see uh, as this goes on, I like to measure emotions and, and ratios and things like that. And I would say I was at a three out of 10 in self-love and I reached a seven and, you know, then an eight and then a nine. And I really realized what self-love is. And it's this ability to, 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 to love yourself regardless of of the circumstances, regardless of what you've done mm. and forgive yourself. And that doesn't mean go, you know, do, do bad things and, and, and impact people in that way. But it's this, yeah, go you know, going back kind of treating yourself as, 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 as like your inner child, right. Or your child, you love your baby. And so what the shift that I made was, was starting these new companies and this new journey with the past that I've had and with the realizations that I've had and understanding that I was going to do everything from a place of self-love, from a place of prioritizing emotional intelligence and desired emotions. And with the belief that I was going to prove that more can be achieved through feeling how you want to feel versus the pain or, or, or fear of, of feeling how you don't want to feel. Right. So instead of feel it, fear of failure, a, a embracing and, uh, and, and desiring a feeling of worthiness and success. And I went forward to prove that out. And well, here we are. Hey, <laughs> beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing the story because it's always interesting for people to know 
how did we arrive, you know, to that moment and point in our life when we do focus on emotions. And as you said beautifully, when we really focus on these desired emotions that we really want to feel to create a reality going forward. So here we are, and we are in the context of the team development. So tell me, how did you then move into developing the Align and what's going on in Align in relationship with teams? Yeah, so so uh, I just been speaking for a while. So I, I, you know, when these interviews, you always like to take take a break just to to make sure you don't go on and on. Um, it was something, you know. There, there's there's kind of, I think being selfish is important when you're coming from an aligned place. I think self is a beautiful thing. So being selfish is a very important thing, and. Um, I decided that, you know, this emotional intelligence around teams, um, one, I felt like I could make more money and be more successful through, uh, optimizing emotional intelligence with my team. So for, for anyone listening and entrepreneurs, like that's, there's going to be multiple things that I equally prioritize, but I just want to say you reach your goals faster. You're going to enjoy it more. You'll make more money and you'll save more money by prioritizing emotional intelligence. And that's proven by science, that's proven in the field. Um, you, you know what, why things don't work. And it's normally because there's a lack of good communication. People are hiding things because they don't feel safe to fully share. And um, so that's one thing. The other thing is I care about my people, right? And and uh, I want them to feel good and I, I want them to be happy. and um, you know, selfishly again, I don't like spending a lot of time on uh, what's not working. And so, when when people come to me as a manager, I love that with a line, they're coming with their emotions processed. So, you know, I'll give you an example, right? Uh, um, resentment, right? Resenting a team member, right? Let's say that Zoran and I are not getting along, and uh, I'm just this has happened many times before in, in, in regards to the situation with team members. I'm just contextualizing it for us as an example. Um, you know, I can just feel resentment towards you. So that's going to lead to a certain level of performance and a certain experience in the workplace. Now, if I understand that, that's another level of awareness. Hey, I'm, I'm feeling this and I want less of it. So that's kind of, there's, there's, I don't even realize it and I'm just, you know, acting there's level one is I realize it and I'm don't know how to deal with it yes. uh, or, or do. And then level two is I want to feel support. I want to feel supported and supportive. Great. Now I have this opening and I'm whatever you believe in, you know, you're connected to source, you're connected to just a great brain pattern. You know, you're connected to to God, whatever you believe in. And now I have a place to relate to Zaron in a way that I can, you know, basically go, hey, I was thinking about it, feeling a bit resentful. I want to feel supportive and supported. Here's some actions or or systems that I want to implement to create more support between us. And then so I've processed that, right? Now, if, if a team member comes to me and is sharing that they've done that, they, they, they've, they've already made that choice and starting to implement it with a team member in our one-to-one, -one, then I can you know, basically go, hey, well, how is this already impact? You know, it's working amazing. We're seeing that you know, sales have increased or our you know, um, project management, we're actually reaching you know, our timelines at a higher efficiency. And then guess what? I can go, Let's share this with the rest of the team. You guys are doing, you know, daily huddles now. You've you've implemented that. This isn't rocket science. This isn't something that you know God came down and you know uh, gave us this download that no one's ever thought about before. It's just because of the resentment, a, a common practice or a best practice is not being implemented because there's resentment between these people, and instead. We want to be supportive. Let's move through that with this. And guess what? You know, it, it changes really quickly. And so, um, my motives were around profits, around you know being the type of leader I wanted to, and and really 
you know, creating efficiency where I got to focus more and enjoy more of what I do. Cause I don't enjoy conflict and I don't enjoy that, um, you know, people being stuck. And so just proving out that teams perform better. Um, our, our process is creating awareness and we're able to create awareness within 10 minutes of a team session. And then, and yeah. then I just, just awareness responsibility, people sharing verbally how they're feeling. So taking responsibility and in that same session, empowerment, here's the action that I want to take. So awareness, responsibility, empowerment is really our process and what we focus on. Beautiful. And I love that awareness, responsibility, and then action. So can you show us just a little bit into the tool, you know, how would that work? Because I know people get can get curious and also for the people who are listening to this on Spotify or on other devices, we're going to reference this video into the description of the podcast so you can then also see what we're talking about. Because I think that the simplicity of becoming aware of how you feel, taking full responsibility and then taking action, it's exactly what teams do need to be able to have more powerful communication, to be able to move to the conflict or tensions very, very quickly. And we know that. We know uh, being a part of the team or being a team member, we know that this is happening all the time, but we never have a full ownership of this because we don't have these conversations. Yeah. And usually bypass it and focus on performance, focus on the target, focus on the goal, and you know, focus on building up the team spirit, but we're not authentic to how we really feel. And I think that that ability for us to kind of be become aware to really yeah. have full responsibility to be fully authentic again you know like you Nadav myself I've seen this again and again and again then the performance the bottom line the whatever we want to create works but for me this is essential part yeah yeah absolutely so um yeah I'll, I'll share uh, and and also for anybody listening we have a we're putting a link for the 90 second demo. So again, if you can, you know, can't watch it or don't want to go through and, you know, watch everything, um, then, you know, we're giving you a 90 second on this as well. So, so yeah, so just, just to, to, for starters, I like people to understand the structure. So all, all of what we're sharing gets done in two, about two hours a month, two 30 minute team sessions, a 15 minute one-to-one -one coaching session, personal session, and then another 15 minutes where a um, person will review their own mindset on their own, okay, to build awareness. Now, everybody focus on, uh, is on the same um, topic at the same time initially, right, in the two team sessions. So this one's around time creation. Now, there's 12 areas of business, 12 areas of life. This is an example. There's sales, there's marketing, there's leadership, there's communication. This is time creation. Now, what we've done is, is built out a library of feelings and thoughts, undesired and desired for every area. And we did this through um, hundreds of, of sessions with thousands of people and just said, just understood what they're, they, they were feeling and thinking about topics. And so um, people will, you know, essentially uh, pre-session or during the session, uh, choose the undesired feelings they have around that area to just the desired feelings they have around that area within 30 to 60 seconds people are aware of their feelings that's a massive breakthrough this can take a long time but because of visually seeing it the fact that the the, the common feelings are there to choose versus them having to dig down and, and and understand them and then being able to click on them is key then what we've provided is the or what you know what the team member sees is the most common beliefs that go with those feelings. Okay. And so again, they're, 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 these are all relatable. Right. And, and so they, and they can go ahead and edit them and change them, you know, as much as they want. Um, but a lot of times people go, Hey, well, how does this app know what I'm thinking? It's because there's a Buddhist saying we are never unique in our suffering, right? We're all very special, but in our thinking and how we feel, we're very rarely unique. Love that. I agree. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And and that's why people fear being vulnerable because you think, well, no one else is feeling this, right? No one else is experiencing this. And then as you can see, if you're watching, it starts to show you, hey, you know, you want to feel inspired. Do you also feel jealous? 
And if you do a little bit, you can choose it because you want to get in touch with that, right? Or if I, if I was only choosing the undesired, it's going to encourage me to choose the desired feeling and thought. So it's directional, right? It's like I shared with the example of, of, you know, resentful and supportive. It's like, we want you to know how you want to feel. That's the key. And so a lot of times we just don't understand how we want to feel. We say we're stressed. How do you want to feel less stressed? No, we don't want to feel less of what we don't want. We want to feel more of what we want. And so we have to understand that. And that's law of attraction. That's psychology. And then people put the um, intensity level that they're currently experiencing it. Okay. And for me, not to show off, but again, I've been, I've been doing this for a while using the tool. That's why my numbers are so high, but you can actually see, I'm going to, you know, be open and vulnerable with you that, um, you know, my numbers have not always been high. And, and so now what I'm showing you is actually my personal align ratio, my feelings and thought patterns in the area of time creation. And you're going to also see my journey. And you can see that, you know, last year, um, about a year and a half ago, I was at 66% desired and now I'm at 95% desired. And I really want to underscore this. We talked about what we want folks to take away here. We want you to take away that emotional intelligence is an incremental journey and embracing and enjoying that journey and knowing your goal of how you want to feel and think, which is the emotional intelligence goal. And just like with exercise, you know, you do it four or five, six times a week, just like with sports. Any of you who are listening that have, you know, been, been high performance athletes, you know, that incremental improvement is what wins games and championships. That's why we practice. And so this creates um, a, a framework and a structure within companies that's only an hour and a half or two hours a month that has you practice. So you can see that, you can see my graph. You know, it's just been this incremental improvement, right? And then I have all this data and team members are able to go in and, and understand, um, you know, where they're at. And so the, the responsibility part is an aligned share. And so you 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 have awareness now. The responsibility part is reading. You're feeling the pattern and the intensity out loud, and then create an action, right? And so um, again, I'm I'm I have very higher I ones here and overall because I do this consistently. But let's use overwhelm as an example. I have this undesired feeling of overwhelm. My undesired pattern is feel overwhelmed by the amount of work that I have. And let's, it's at intensity level one now, but you can see that it was at a seven. It's, it went down six points. Well, let's say I was at a seven, then my action would be, hey, you know what? I need to make some time to research best practices of how to time. And then, you know, then I would, or maybe I need a time block and, and, you know, every day make two hours to focus on tasks, or I need to hire a really great coordinator to support me. I mean, you start to break apart these bigger situations into the specific mindset patterns and, and take micro action. What I want to underscore here is these aren't, you know, like these, these gifts from God, this, you know, this coach handing down this, you've never heard this before, but what we find is that people normally take one of four actions, which is it's currently in our process, but we're not doing it because of a high undesired intensity level. Like we know that we should be time blocking, but we feel scarcity. And so we don't have enough time to do it, or we don't have enough time to put it in the project management system or collectively, we're not implementing a best practice within the company that's available through, you know, chat GPT, Google, whatever it is, because we have a high we have a high fear of being open and transparent. And so we're not doing that collectively as a company. Uh, the third action is this needs to be addressed within an existing meeting agenda item, a one-time new meeting or, or some, some recurring meeting, or we need to hire an expert. Actions almost always fall under that. So you can start understanding how easy it is to start relating to emotional intelligence with just an hour and a half or two hours a month bringing the team together uh, and, and creating those actions. Now, what I'm going to share next is really where a lot of the power is, where 
Now what we're showing is the team collectively. And this is an example of uh, a, a company that's worked with us for over 18 months around communication. Okay. They're at 84% desired, 16% undesired in the area of communication. And you can see that they weren't born with it. Uh, you know, just about a year ago, they were at 63%. And they, you know, started focusing on it and again saw this incremental improvement. Um, for those those of you who are listening, I'm I'm going over this trend graph and just showing over time. It went from, you know, 63 to 69 to 78 to, you know, 84%. And um, what we're able to see collectively, uh, which is great, is is one, um, who is the best communicator, right? Who has, who's a leader in this area? Everybody has areas they're strong and areas they need support. So we can start going to those team members that have, you know, are, are at 91%, 92%, 100%, in the areas of communication and modeling their actions, systemize those within the company and start having amazing communication. Additionally, what we're able to see is who's achieving, right? So we're able to see the different achievements that people are making in communication, the actions that led them to there and um, their journey, right? Around that, like you can see, this is uh, the CEO of the company. He's gone from a eight to a two and annoyed in communication because he realized He's being impatient. He's not, you know, making the time to really listen to people because he's a CEO. He's got more to do than, than, you know, time available, but it's not paying off. And so he's chosen to make that choice to, to reduce that. And the last thing I'll say, um, you know, before I hand it back to you is it shows you what are the most prevalent feeling and thought patterns within your team, within departments and within companies. And so you know what there is to address. So here, you know, half the team wanted to feel more understood, but they were at a 6.7 out of 10. So it's below the desired threshold of eight. And we want to address that. So in the sessions where, hey, what would make you feel more, more, more understood? People are sharing, they're sharing action, we're sharing best practices, we systemize those. And, you know, guess what? In the coming weeks and months, people started feeling more, more understood because they created systems within the company to foster that. And most, even, even as importantly, people started less and less people felt misunderstood, right? Additionally, open communication. That was at a um, 5.7 before, but at 8.3 now. And you can, again, just in the session go, hey, you're at a 10 and feeling open, right? Um, how are you doing? And the person can share. So you're going into these team sessions, these individual sessions, knowing what people are already thinking and what they want to talk about and what journey they're on. And what does it do? It creates incredible amount of efficiency in communication, in coming to resolution, in being solution oriented. And I'll just go back to the three reasons I did this one more money, more sales, uh, people feeling good, which leads to also more money because you have a higher level of employee yeah. retention and satisfaction. And thirdly, the, um, you know, desire to, to be efficient with our time. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, you know, and really for, for the viewers to understand how the tool works and uh, how we can not only understand ourselves, but we can see those emotions on the screen, you know, which I think it's a power of this. Sometimes we get really intertwined with our own inability to understand how we feel uh, and to really label it and to nail it down. And, you know, for me, human beings are predictable. We're all in the same, you know, as you said beautifully, we are essentially different, you know, we, you being you and me being me. We, in our essence, we have different journey, different life stories, and that we have uniqueness around us. But there is a lot of commonalities, how we feel. And then once when you can really let, see those feelings, I think it's absolutely easy to gain this awareness and then to take responsibility and then from responsibility to take the action. I think that's a wonderful thing. And also moving into transparency, what I love about 
the, working with team like this is just being open and transparent because in a traditional old fashioned organizations, you know, people are hiding. They're not open about how they feel. Very rarely they would share or in a traditional team building event or corporate function when everybody gets drunk or they lose their shields, they will begin then really saying to you, you know, I'm really frustrated with you. I'm really, you piss me off because the way you communicate with me, it's uh, diminishing and it undermines my power of authority, but I would need to be under toxic influence to be able to open up and share, you know? So, and it's still happening. You know, I still, in two weeks ago, I was at a corporate event with a client and, you know, people were in the session and we were trying our best to get everybody to share how they feel they could and they wouldn't. And then we go, everybody got drunk, and then suddenly everybody's open. And usually people will say, but don't talk about it afterwards because, you know, now everybody knows the big secret, right? So what I love about this is that the essence that really makes team powerful and strong is that our ability to be transparent about how we feel, to love and support one another, to really honor each other, to reach that highest state of the feelings when we are moving from lower indicators to the higher indicators, you know, from overwhelm, for example, to be feeling inspired, whatever this contrabalancing feeling. And then we can share in a beautiful, transparent and open fashion, because when we do that, then the true dream spirit, which is essence of our ability, partnership, support, sharing, loving, you know, doing things together comes yeah. about really freely. And then we can co-create miracles. And as you said, productivity, money, wealth, whatever the, the end game is, it just happens. So, yeah. And, and, and I think, um, you know, it's really about compassion and everyone comes with the past, right. And, and everyone's coming into work with the past. And some of us were overly like their families were, were so open with emotions where it was, it was like leaking everywhere and didn't feel safe. Some people came from very healthy environments. And some people on the other side where you weren't allowed to talk about your emotions, right? It just wasn't there and it, was, it wasn't safe. And so um, when when we understand that and, and create this safe space and environment to do it, um, and, and I think the key is uh, getting everybody, there's, they're getting everyone understanding a framework, right? It's just like project management, just like CRM system. It's, mm. you know, it's like calendaring. It's just like EOS, OKRs, KPIs, right? When you start to really um, get the team uh, visual, you know, it, it's visual, it's touch, and it's audible, right? It's actually three three of the senses. And so you, everybody starts to follow that. Um, there's this it just le it leads to performance, just like with, with any other structure, right? Like any sports team, they start following a, a special offense or defense or plays. Um, you start getting it, and 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 it's it's and then performing. And I think that's you know beautiful thing about it. Yeah, and what you know, my favorite thing around all of this, Nadav, it's what makes human being human. It's our yeah. ability to feel. Yeah, it's your ability to think. I think that thinking. You know, it's overrated. We all use our mind a lot and we got trained to use our mind a lot. But for me, in the essence, when you look into the humanity and who we are, it, this deeper ability for us to experience emotions, to feel emotions is super important for all of us. And I think in the context of, of organizational development, corporate work, sometimes we don't give ourselves permission to fully expressed that. And I'm so grateful and happy that a lot of people would use this system to be able to open up and feel and understand and follow it and share it and see how other people feel. And also the elements of understanding in the case that you have shown, who is the best communicator? What are the behaviors he or she is modeling? Why is my CEO frustrated? Why are they not available, you know, to me? And so on and so forth. So the healthy working culture can be created. Yeah. Yeah. And once you, once you understand that the action is, is really the easiest part mm -hmm. to know what to do. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Not every action is going to be successful. Right. But, but uh, any, any high performer knows it's about making choices quickly, mm -hmm. right. Form choices quickly, not letting choices go on and on. That's not, not a great practice. And so when we, 
have the data, can assess the situation. The action is a is a, a Google search, a chat GPT prompt, a request from 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 an expert away, right? And then you you go there and you start optimizing, and this worked, this didn't work, but we're we're making progress and 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 progress and uh, you know to get a bit woo woo for a second, humans experience the universe expanding as wanting and fulfilling on our wants. And that's progress, right? And so when we are experiencing progress, that's when we're feeling most alive, most productive, you know, happiest and 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 supportive. And so um it really what what emotional intelligence does is help, you know, think about a, a flowing stream or river, right? And there's a there's there's some some natural dam there, right? That you know, sticks and stones. And when you start pulling it apart and letting it flow through, right? And, and and you build that flow with your team. Things that have been stuck get unstuck. And the the takeaway that I think is really important for everyone here is uh, just, just repeating it from earlier is, you know, if you believe that emotional intelligence is important, which I encourage you to, to if you do, wonderful. And if you don't, um, just experiment that it is. Right, you can you can be right about it not being important again in thirty to sixty days, right? Yeah. Um, do something, you know, br- bring it, br- bring you know, uh, a line or a different methodology or you know something else you find that that feels like it's best for you um, to your organization, and ha- have a sixty to ninety day commitment to bringing emotional intelligence in because what what most companies do. And teams do is they do strategy and execution. Mm-hmm. If you're doing strategy and execution on top of very healthy, flowing emotional and thought patterns and you know uh, alignment, there's a higher likelihood of success. If you're doing strategy and execution on top of um, unexpressed emotions, resentment, fear uh, of, of transparency, being fired, of scarcity, time scarcity, then you can still be successful. You just won't enjoy it. And the likelihood of success is lower or the likelihood of reaching your full potential in a shorter amount of time is lower when when creating on top of that foundation. Which is feeling good about ourselves, you know, exp- experiencing more positive emotions and building it up and, and being able to process, you know, whatever, you know, holds us back. We can talk about this forever. It's one yeah. of these podcasts that we can just go on and on and on. <laughs> yeah. Especially so looking at each other in pretty faces. It's such a juicy topic. And I think it's such a uh, original thinking. It's always welcome in this conversation. So, Call for action, that uh, from your point of view, for our existing clients from TNM Coaching and people who are listening and, and want to yeah. become future clients when it comes to the understanding more of this modality, practicing, yeah. playing, experimenting, what will be your call for action for our listeners? Yeah, so what I just shared around, you know, around um, focusing on emotional intelligence, and if you want to um, support from Align specifically, then um, go to alignedcoach.co. It's also going to be in the um, the description, and we'll provide you with a complimentary coaching session. There's a big blue button on the website. You click that, you're going to choose a Calendly. Um, we'll make a difference for you in that session. There's no obligation to buy or move forward, and in that session, we'll even offer you uh, another, you know, more offers of of, of a very affordable coaching. And, and even uh, complimentary thirty days coaching. You know, we we have we have the um, opportunity to provide that. So yeah, go ahead and click and and just you know schedule your session. And your we we promise you one of our commitments is our purpose is democratizing emotional intelligence or emotional intelligence for all. So even in our um, introduction process or in our sales process, we want to provide emotional intelligence and make a difference for people who don't buy from us as well. And so that's our commitment to you as you do that. Beautiful. Thank you so much.
Dav, thank you so much for for presenting this uh, for the audience. Uh, you know, especially for the business people, this is one of these things that we do need to focus our attention to, uh, focus our presence to. I think now more than ever, I feel this is an important topic to address. You know, we do need to become more transparent about the emotions, about how we feel. We do need to understand that this is the fuel that really creates the powerful high impact team that gets people to collaborate and work together. So now is the time. And if you, one of my favorite coaches in TNM affiliation, she says, if you're not having fun, you're not doing it right. Meaning if yeah. your team is not having fun, you're not doing it right. If you yeah. are not feeling inspired every day to show up at the work, you're not doing it right. We can all force ourselves to achieve, to accomplish, to execute on strategies as Adav said, but how do we really feel while we're doing it? And this is what we remember. We remember the organizations that did make us feel fantastic while we were doing what we were doing. We remember team members who were able to have these conversations around their feelings and then clear it up and then move on and synergize a bit more. This is what really counts. So my call for action is watch this space, sign up for the free trials, and hopefully we're going to work together in the future with this wonderful tools. Once again, Adav, thank you so much for joining in. It was a pleasure to have you. And for everybody else, once again, thank you so much for tuning in and listening week after week. Bye for now. Bye. Have a beautiful day, everyone. <laughs>